Welcome to the Jean Hales podcast, Women's Health Week series, where we talk about all the things you want to hear but can never ask. Here's your host, Janet Mishamore. Today I'll be joined by the CEO of one of the most esteemed and loved organisations in Australia. Danika Lees is the CEO of the CWA in New South Wales. She's a passionate advocate for the rights of rural and remote women. And today we wanted to talk to her about health in the bush. I think many of us in the city take for granted our ability to get to a hospital or see a specialist when we need it. But that kind of access is not guaranteed when you live in rural areas. The impact of COVID has introduced new challenges for people living on the land. And it is fascinating to hear about the history of the CWA and why today it is more necessary than ever. Please enjoy my interview with Danika Lees. Danika, I'm so pleased to be talking to you today. I absolutely love the CWA as an organisation. I know it began as a group of women who decided to band together to address the inequities in things like education in rural areas. What kind of issues do you see facing rural Australians today? Yeah, it's interesting you touch on that, some of the objectives as to why CWA was started 100 years ago. And if we look back at some of the earliest minutes, meeting minutes and discussions as to why a group of you know fairly isolated and remote women felt that they needed to come together to, to do something about it, really the two driving factors behind it were access to education and access to healthcare. There was a number of other factors as well, but those two key themes were key issues for the organisation back then. Before it even was an organisation, they were issues that remote and rural women were facing where they were, frankly, just really upset and sick and tired of seeing their family and people that they know and love dying from a preventable disease, for example, or children dying at a young age or, you know, women really struggling in childbirth. The themes are still the same. We could trace the line, I suppose, right through the history of the CWA and the detail around the theme might change, but the theme itself stays the same. So when we talk about access to health in 2021... It could mean access to specialist services or it could mean concerns about telehealth replacing face-to-face services in regional areas. It's still a very much live issue around access to maternity and gynecological services in rural New South Wales. For many women, they've got to travel a really long way to be able to get those services. Look, we still keep advocating on a lot of those issues. Now, you mentioned preventable diseases. What kind of diseases are we talking about? Well, when I was initially talking about preventable diseases, it was in relation to pretty major things happening 100 years ago that most of the population is vaccinated against now, thank goodness. But we still have issues in many parts of rural New South Wales. And, and I suppose they fall into the types of categories of diseases where if you're being proactive about your health and making sure you're getting screened and having your regular checkup that some of those diseases can be prevented or at the very least slowed down and managed. So things like breast cancer or bowel cancer, ovarian cancer is an interesting one and a focus for CWA at the moment because it's also our research topic at the moment that we raise a lot of money for every year, a different medical condition. And we're focusing on ovarian cancer at the moment because it is really quite lethal with not a lot of symptoms showing in women before they get the very bad news. Some of those things, um, skin cancer checks are really important, particularly for our rural members who spend a lot of time in the sun. And I think the one thing I'd like to add is heart disease in women. We often just think of heart disease as being a male problem, but in actual fact, it's a problem for women too. I'm sure another health concern for rural women, and indeed all of us, is COVID-19. Can you tell us about what you're hearing from your members when it comes to COVID? There's a range of different issues. I think one of the number one things that we hear from our members is the issue of isolation and loneliness. And, you know, these are women in many regards who are kind of used to being isolated. I mean, they live in fairly geographically remote areas, some of these women, or other rural areas. Some of them live on their own as well. So they're kind of used to that element of isolation. But one of the reasons that they're involved in CWA, for example, is because of that, so that they can have a social interaction with people in their community and work on things together that are going to help their community. And a lot of our branches haven't been able to meet or haven't been able to meet as regularly. 
haven't been able to do the events that they would usually do. It really does take a toll and combined with obviously access to vaccinations as well is an issue for those women in country areas. It's so easy to imagine the kind of isolation you're talking about taking a toll on the community's mental health. Have you seen a downturn in mental health in rural areas? It's hard to know whether there's been a significant downturn in mental health, although I think on the upside what's pleasing is that there seems to be at the very least more of a conversation around mental health, which is leading to a bit more awareness. I still think there's a lot more that can be done on that front, but I think my observation at least, and I've been involved in and out of kind of rural industries for about 20 years, is that at least there's a much more willingness to have a conversation around it. But that said, there is a long way to go. We at CWA of New South Wales, we ran a campaign a couple of years ago that we've actually sort of kept going because it was such a successful campaign, which we called the Sconversation Campaign. And it was about making sure that people took the time to just make those connections, making sure that they're taking time to reach out to others, have a conversation, so to speak. And we partnered with the Rural Diversity Mental Health Program in relation to that. And we've got some what we call conversation cards, which have scone recipes on the front. And then they also have on the back some questions to ask yourself in terms of how your mental health might be going or how a friend's mental health might be going at any particular point in time. So, you know, those little light touch things I think are quite important in terms of awareness. That said, then I think there is a drastic need for more mental health services in rural New South Wales. Psychiatry services is one that we hear about from our members all the time. They cannot get in to see a psychiatrist. Psychologists are very difficult as well. The New South Wales government is injecting a lot more money into it, but we've a long way to go. I love your conversations. Number one, I think the CWA scone recipe is without a doubt the best. But people actually need conversation starters in difficult topics. Are those conversation starters available to anyone in New South Wales or, in fact, anyone in Australia? Yeah, look, we can send out some conversation cards to whoever might need one. Most of our branches would have some of those conversation cards in their possession. So probably one of the best ways is to get in contact with your local branch and you can talk about this conversation campaign, as well as get involved with a lot of other things that CWA might be doing in someone's local area. You've given all of us some fantastic tips of what the CWA has got to offer. What is the best way to contact the CWA? You can give us a call at our state office and we can put you in touch with your local branch or you can go online at cwaofnsw.org.au and you can see all the different things that we're working on at the moment and you can even join online as well. And once you join online, we'll be in touch with you and make sure that you're connected to the branches closest to you or the most suitable for you. We actually even have an online branch as well, so that's becoming quite popular for people that don't have time or perhaps they're travelling to go physically to a local branch. So our online branch meets online. So there's a CWA branch out there for everyone. And in terms of other states? The same for other states as well. I would encourage people that are listening in other states to visit their state CWA website. They would equally love to have people come and join and they'll be able to put people in touch with their closest branch. This has been the most fantastic conversation. I was not aware there are so many branches in New South Wales, but what a great network of getting messages out, but also supporting people. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm going to be looking with huge interest about what the next phase of CWA New South Wales looks like. Oh, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you and look forward to staying involved with you going forward. And I think this, we've achieved so much as an organisation, but there's still so much more for us to do through the exciting times ahead for us. Thank you very much. Apart from the fact that I can't stop thinking about those delicious CWA scones, I hope Danika's words remind us of the very different needs of women across this country. We'll be talking to more women in regional and remote areas, so do stay tuned for those episodes. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Jean Hales podcast, Women's Health Week series. Today's episode has been brought to you by Liptember. You can find out more about Danica and the CWA of New South Wales by visiting cwaofnsw.org.au. For free expert health information for all women, girls and gender-diverse people, visit genehales.org.au.